guys are ready for your headliner. I don't even have to ask. You guys are ready. Yeah, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Comedy Attic is happy to welcome back Mr. Stuart Huff. Everybody, how are you? Yeah, you guys good? Think you had a round of a pro, uh, Bob right there, funny dude, Bob. Yeah. I like Bob, he's like a horny Winnie the Pooh, isn't he? <laughs> you guys liked him, but you didn't really trust him, you know? <laughs> yeah. And Dave, I think Dave's hilarious. He's fucking weird as shit, isn't he? I love it, I just love it when a person comes up here and makes their private thoughts public, you know what I mean? I just love watching them. All right, I'm so glad you guys are here. This is the only club that I work that uh, that uh, this is possible, actually, to record a CD. Most of the places I work boo me off stage and throw shit at me. And, uh, and I come to Bloomington like, yay! You know? Yeah, most of the time. I've done every Moose Lodge in Indiana. <laughs> Been two years doing all the Moose Lodges preparing for this shit right here. Okay. So, thank you guys so much uh, for me to you for being here. What we're going to do tonight, the show you and I are going to do tonight, is either the most depressing comedy show ever written or the funniest TED Talk. <laughs> I'm not sure which one, but we'll discuss after the show. I've been doing comedy for 20 years, and I have proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can put a square peg in a round hole. <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna fuck up the peg. <laughs> so let's dive in and see what you guys think. The show starts like this. Jesus Christ does not believe in transgender people. That is what the man in the camouflaged Mountain Dew ball cap yelled at me. I responded by saying, holy crap, I've met Jesus' interpreter. Boy, there's not a lot of them around. Isn't that a horrible hate-filled sentence? Jesus Christ not believe in transgender people. Let's leave that sentence right over here, okay? Let's just leave it right over here because we're going to come back to it. <laughs> Let's go over here and compare and contrast. Do you guys remember that from elementary school? Let's apples and oranges this shit, shall we? Right now at my home, I have a 14-month-old baby boy, okay? My, thank you. My favorite thing to do on this planet is to watch that kid's face when he encounters something new. It's amazing. He's so fucking excited about this world. Those of you with kids know he lights up about every tiny little detail and he points. He points at shit, looks at me like, are you saying this shit? <laughs> He's so excited. I have to say, yes, son, that's a spaghetti strainer shaped like an armadillo. <laughs> I know how awesome it is. That's the reason I bought it, you know? <laughs> It's so amazing to watch his joy about this world. I gave him a hinge to play with, a plastic hinge. Fucking blew his mind. 20 minutes, he's like, oh, 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 oh. And I'm watching him like, well, it is a pretty cool invention. You know? I guess before hinges, we were all just stuck in rooms. You know? <laughs> it's amazing to be around the joy of an infant, you know. I gave him watermelon. He's never tasted watermelon before. He's sitting at my kitchen tables, all fat and naked, just sitting there. I took a little piece of watermelon, put it in his mouth, he peed. Started peeing at the table. I've never seen a human being chew and urinate simultaneously. And it reminded me how good watermelon really is. So, the question you and I are going to attempt to answer tonight is this. How do we go from that level of curiosity, that level of bliss and awe about this amazing universe around us, to thinking you know the thoughts of Jesus Christ? <laughs> How does the human brain close? It's a big question, is it not? Huge question. Fuck it, there's a hundred of us in the attic. Let's take a swing at it. <laughs> 
We got to start with beliefs, right? That's what we're talking about here, beliefs, you know? Right, my, right now, my son has no beliefs. He's 14 months old. He doesn't have a belief in his head. He has emotions, right? He's happy, he's sad, he's poopy, he's tired. Right? Those are emotions. He loves Mexican restaurants. He loves them. The Hispanic culture has bright, vibrant colors. You ever notice that? The music is so upbeat and happy. The saddest Mexican song in the world has 10 trumpets and 14 maracas. <laughs> And I carry him in, and as soon as we open that door, he's like, <laughs> he's so excited. He has no opinion on immigration. <laughs> he doesn't have an opinion on immigration. 14 months old. I haven't taught him yet that we divided the land up into little bitty sections, and we judge each other depending on which section you happen to be born in. How am I going to teach something so idiotic to a child? How am I going to teach a child that that's the way adults behave, you know? I'm going to teach my son that no human being chooses where we're born. We do not get to make that choice. I was born in Kentucky. I wouldn't have fucking chosen. <laughs> Yes. Nothing against Kentucky, but Copenhagen over Paducah every day of the week. <laughs> we don't get to choose where we're born, so therefore judging another person based on that fact alone is an incorrect way of thinking. You know? That's what I'm going to teach my son. Yeah. My father-in-law, on the other hand, <laughs> will teach my son that the damn-ass dirty Mexicans are the reason he's missing a fucking finger. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? The look on your face is perfect. You look at me like, what? That's the way I feel dealing with this man. He's my father-in-law, so I love him. But... No, I don't. I want to. I'm trying. He's missing his ring finger. My father-in-law is missing his ring finger, right? And he walks around my house like, hey, hippie boy. That's what he calls me. He's like, hey, hippie boy, you want to learn some shit? Put that book down. Come listen to me. You see this? Mexicans, that's all this shit is. Damn Mexicans and the Chinese took my finger. And I argue with him. I'm like, look, buddy, it's not the Mexicans' fault that you drank 17 Coronas. How's that possibly their fault? And it's certainly not the Chinese' fault that an M80 went off in your damn hand. You lit the fuse and then threw the lighter. How is that their fault? But that's what he believes in his heart. And no words out of this hippie mouth are going to make him change his mind. Boy, once a human being really gets a hold of a belief, it will take forever and a free t-shirt to get us to change our damn mind. <laughs> We do not like to let go of beliefs, you know. I met a woman in Ocala, Florida, who believes Mary Magdalene appeared to her in a pork chop. <laughs> Mary was Jewish. <laughs> I think what you got there is a non-kosher apparition. <laughs> It's amazing to me how tight we hold on to our beliefs, you know. I was uh, doing a show in Montana, great bar, in this bar, right? This guy comes up to me after the show, easily 55, maybe even 60, grown man, right? Comes up and he goes, hey buddy, you're pretty funny, can I buy you a drink? I look at him, he's wearing a huge cowboy hat and he has a glass eye, so I'm in. <laughs> right? And we're sitting at the bar, and this dude is slamming whiskey. I mean, he's not sipping. I mean, he's knocking them back, right? And after about an hour, he starts to tell me some pretty personal shit. He's telling me some stuff I don't think he would have told me 11 whiskeys ago. <laughs> so in my head, I'm thinking, mm, I might find out about this eye. <laughs> Yeah. He takes one more shot of whiskey. He looks at me and goes, you know, my youngest son's probably the dumbest son of a bitch I've ever met in my life. I said, is that right? How'd you lose that eye? He goes, oh shit, that's a good story. He goes, I was driving along in my pickup truck, hit a patch of ice. Damn truck flipped three times. My lucky horseshoe came off my rear view, poked my damn eye. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. 
I said, buddy, I'm sorry that happened to you, but that's funny as hell. You're lucky horse you poked your eye out. I said, I guess it's no longer your lucky horse you. Right? He looks me and goes, what? Of course it's still my lucky horse you. Who knows what would have happened if it wouldn't have been there? If you want to believe in trinkets, fine. But when one attacks you, you let it go. It's incredible, is it not? How tight we hold on. Huh? Evidence does not change a closed mind. It just pisses it off. <laughs> That's a Bloomington sentence right there. Yeah, it's a nice Bloomington sentence. I was on a plane. This is my least favorite plane trip I've ever taken. I'm flying from Atlanta to Boston, all right? Gentleman sitting next to me is reading the paper, right? A real paper, right? Contrary to what Bob believes, people still read it. So he's reading the paper. I look at the headline. It says, Texas flooding, global warming, question mark. Right? This dude goes, hey, look at this bullshit. Global warming, big fucking lie, man. Just made up. Just made up by the liberals, just to piss me off. <laughs> Every single tax dollar spent on science, a waste of money. It's a waste of money, it's liberal bullshit. Science ain't never done one thing for one human ever. <laughs> I'm thinking, we're on a plane! <laughs> Is it me? I mean, are my expectations of humanity too fucking high? But you can't hate science. You can't hate science and love NASCAR. Right? NASCAR without science is called running. Three hours, I'm on the plane with a grown man who was bitching me about science. At some point, I started giggling. It was rude of me to do, but it was so childish. A grown man. I pictured him standing in front of the periodic tables. <laughs> this is all bullshit. It's all made up by the liberals just to piss me off. Fluorine, uranium, carbon. These are Dr. Seuss words. Shit ain't right. Potassium's a load of bullshit. <laughs> that's the nerdiest joke I've ever read right here. Yeah, that's the nerdiest joke I've ever read. Because fluorine, uranium, carbon, and potassium spell fuck on the periodic table. You know I mean? yeah. I'm proud of that shit, too. Isn't it? I couldn't believe it. Three, you know what, if the guy would have said to me, you know, I've read a lot about global warming and I just don't think our behavior is actually affecting it. That's a conversation, right? Science ain't never done one thing for one, but you're wearing bifocals, you kid. It's irritating dealing with a closed mind, is it not? God, hating science is like yelling at a plant. <laughs> How funny would it be to see a grown person yell at him, fuck you, Vicus. Are you photosynthesizing right now, you piece of shit? You better not be turning sunlight into sugars, I'm gonna tear you an asshole. I'm a fan of science. I finally figured out why it interests me so much. Human beings did not build this world, right? We didn't build it. So we're trying to figure out how it works. It's a puzzle. That's exciting to me. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. Science is a search for answers. And I guess that's controversial to closed minds. Because closed minds think they already know all the damn answers. If you're certain that you know something, and a scientist comes along with evidence proving you wrong, <laughs> that'll piss you off. If you know for a fact that the aurora borealis is a trail of pixie dust left over from a sky unicorn, <laughs> and you know that because that is what your mamma told you, <laughs> and a scientist comes along with bullshit made up liberal words like magnetosphere and solar wind, well, at this point, you either have to humbly admit that you were wrong, 
or kill the scientists. <laughs> and everybody in this room knows enough history to know which one of those options humans prefer. We do not like to let go of beliefs. We do not like to admit we're wrong. We'd rather kill a scientist. Joseph Priestley, he was a scientist from England. He was also a preacher. He discovered oxygen. Well, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he should have known. Don't you be going around discovering shit. <laughs> a church-fueled mob. Isn't that an amazing sentence? <laughs> it's a mob fueled by church. I don't even know how you get a church-fueled mob. Did they not read the book? <laughs> it says in here we should love and accept everybody. I agree with that. I agree. Except for that asshole that says the air exists. <laughs> Joseph Priestley said, hey guys, this is something. Forty humans with torches went, the fuck it is? <laughs> they went to kill the dude. He heard them coming. It's a big mob of people, right? And he ran out his back door. They were so mad, they burnt his laboratory to the ground. Then they went to his home and burnt his home to the ground, which is hilarious. Because for a fire, you need... <laughs> no amount of human anger will change the truth. Doesn't matter how pissed off we are at the results. We cannot redneck gravity to death. <laughs> We've been killing scientists for way too long. In the year 925, a medical doctor from Baghdad named Razzies, interesting guy, Razzies, he thought it would be a great idea for humanity to collect all the known medical knowledge from all over the world and compile it into a book. Well, he shouldn't have done that. He should have known. Don't you be going around compiling shit. I'm going to stand like this till all you fucks laugh. That's funny as shit. I'm not letting you get away with not laughing at that. Don't you be going around compiling shit. That's funny as hell. Oscar Wilde said, if you're going to tell people the truth, you better make them laugh or they'll kill you. <laughs> Apparently Razzie's book wasn't fucking funny. He should have had some cartoons in there. Or something. He should have written fart on every page. <laughs> A court of law convicted him of heresy and ordered him beaten with his own book. Yeah, if you didn't laugh at that, you ain't got no dark comedy in you. He got beat with his own damn book. God, I hope he had a chapter in there on book wounds. It's amazing, isn't it? We have been killing scientists since we came down from the trees. It would not shock me to learn that is the reason we came down from it. There was a scientist on the ground. <laughs> Look at that asshole. <laughs> Trying to figure shit out. <laughs> Damn petri dish. Let's kill him. <laughs> 1619, Lucilio Vanini, he was an Italian philosopher. He wrote a book suggesting. We all know the definition of the word suggesting. <laughs> that means, hey guys, what do you think? <laughs> he wrote a book suggesting that perhaps human beings might be related to monkeys. <laughs> he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he should have known. Don't be going around suggesting. <laughs> We convicted him of heresy and burnt him at the stake. Yeah, we have carefully considered your suggestion. <laughs> and we violently oppose it. <laughs> oh, phenomenal. We burn a dude at the stake for making a suggestion in a book. That is extremely monkey-like behavior. <laughs> I met a guy recently that doesn't believe in evolution, so I asked him why. I said, why don't you believe in it? He goes, look, buddy, I've been to the damn zoo. I've seen the monkeys. They don't act anything like we do. <laughs> Wrong way to look at evolution. Don't look to monkeys for human traits. Look to humans for monkey fucking traits. <laughs> It's a lot easier to see that way, right? Do construction on the interstate. Bring three lanes down to two. You watch the fucking monkeys. 
Am I right? Yeah. We are an orange barrel away from the jungle, my friends. Right. That's all you've got to do to reduce our polite society. You drop an orange ball. Fucking scratch off tickets and funyuns are floating in the air. We lose our minds in construction. Coexist Corolla throwing chicken tenders at a church bus. It's the only way this civilization makes sense to me if we're monkeys. Otherwise, I am severely depressed. You know? Last year, over a hundred human beings injured themselves trying to shoot fireworks out of their ass. Over a hundred. If we're monkeys, that's not too bad. I'm proud of us if we're monkeys. If we're made in God's image, I'm fucking scared. That is a scary concept to me. If there are gates and I walk through them and hear, Light me up, Moses! Fuck those rednecks! Last year, a group of students at Yale, fascinating study. You guys ought to look it up. You can read the whole study online. Uh, a group of students at Yale did a study. They taught monkeys how to use money, all right? They taught them our system of money, right? They had monkeys, they gave each one a stack of coins. They had grapes. They taught the monkeys, if you want a grape, you have to buy it with a coin. First thing that happened, one of the monkeys stole all the fucking money. <laughs> Just like us, you know. Yeah, 99% yeah, were pissed. <laughs> you put a hundred monkeys in a room with a hundred typewriters, eventually they'll write Shakespeare. It's the wrong way to look at evolution, I think. You put a hundred humans in a room, eventually we'll all start masturbating and throwing our poop. <laughs> as soon as that cell phone battery dies. <laughs> something to play with. <laughs> the state of Alabama started teaching evolution in their public schools this year. I know, I don't know what to say to that. I'm proud of you. <laughs> evolution is slow. <laughs> States of Tennessee and uh, Louisiana both have laws on the books opting out of teaching evolution. Don't you love the English language? We opt out. <laughs> you guys go ahead. <laughs> We're gonna be back here. Just thinking about mermaids. <laughs> I don't understand how you opt out of educating your children. We're gonna be back here just ignoring all the information. <laughs> That's the closed mind's favorite hobby. Ignoring information. That's their favorite thing to do. Have you read this? Fuck no! La, 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 la. <laughs> Once your mind is closed, you can't allow anything new in there. It might challenge something you already believe, and then fuck, I had to pull my knife out. That's when shit went wrong. <laughs> I want all the information. I want it all, right? I like everything from every little angle. I want all the information. I'm a curious human being, you know? Anti-abortionists like to point out that at week five in the womb, a fetus has a heartbeat. I looked it up. That's absolutely, it develops a heartbeat in week five, right? But they never seem to mention at week five, it also has a tail. <laughs> Why don't they put that on the billboard? <laughs> Some babies are born with tails. I didn't know that, and they're not tiny either. I mean, it's a pretty good size. You, know, you could smack a rat with it. You know? <laughs> I'm obsessed with our education system, right? Or lack of, in my opinion. My wife is a teacher. She's a Montessori school teacher, you know? She gets at least one email every seven to 10 days, something like that. Parents are extremely worried about what she's teaching in history class. They don't want her to teach anything horrific. Well, fuck, let's just cancel class. <laughs> Have you guys read history? Holy cat dicks. I mean, what? How are we going to teach what happened in the past without being horrific? 
That's nearly impossible to do. You know? Are we going to teach kids the truth about Thanksgiving? <laughs> Genocide is a touchy subject. <laughs> you know, fuck it, let's just make some hand turkeys. You know? <laughs> it's amazing how much we lie in history class. Phenomenal. We made up the lie that George Washington cannot tell a lie to teach kids not to fucking lie. <laughs> What the hell is wrong with us? That's insane behavior, you know? Texas right now is trying to change the word slaves in their history books to the word workers. <laughs> slaves to workers. Why don't we just change the word history to the word bullshit? <laughs> we have to teach the truth, all of it. We had a gay president. Do you guys know that? Applaud if you knew that, I'm curious. <laughs> Not near enough of us. This is a very progressive, open-minded, liberal town, and there's like maybe ten in this room. I didn't know that either. Don't feel bad. You know, we weren't taught this. How how would you know something if someone doesn't teach it to you? That's the reason I think education could be a mind opener. You know, you take kids away from their parents and you go, I know what they told you, but look at this shit. <laughs> Right? right now, school systems are obsessed with not offending parents. My opinion, with no punchline, if, you do, if you're obsessed with not offending parents, you ain't got an education system. What you got is a babysitting service. That's all you got. You, know? you have to challenge brains. You have to open them, make them think from different angles. You know, uh, Buchanan was gay. I believe 15th president, if I've got that right, if my memory serves. He was not in the closet. Andrew Jackson made fun of him in the New York Times, called him a Siamese twin. That was a slang term for homosexuals back then. They were making fun of the man for being a homosexual in the New York Times. So people knew it. He had a 15-year-long relationship with Senator Rufus King from Alabama. They were lovers for 15 years. Rufus King took a job overseas. Him and the president broke up. The president of the United States of America said, When that man left, he took my heart. I've been courting other men. Haven't found anybody to replace him. This isn't in the closet. Why wasn't I taught this? I don't know what's more shocking, the fact that we already had a gay president or we had a gay senator from Alabama. <laughs> we need to teach the truth, you know, all of it. I think we should all know that the White House was built by slaves. Slaves built the building, right? And then we turned around and named it the White House. I mean, that's a dick move. <laughs> Name it something else, you know? Name it the Beige Building or something. Why do you gotta name it that, you know? We're so afraid of upsetting other, upsetting people, you know? We just need to learn what not to do. That's the reason I think horrific stories in history, very important for our kids to hear. The things that I regret in my life, the things I feel guilty about, they'll never happen again. I've stayed up at night worrying about them, you know? Worrying about who I hurt, you know? I regret my behavior, in other words, fucking learned. <laughs> Horrific stories tell us what not to do, you know? Yes, I think we should all know Mount Rushmore was carved by a clan member. Clan member carved the mountain, you know? I think Mount Rushmore might be one of the biggest dick moves in U.S. history. It's a, when you know the history of it, it's a dick move. 1868, uh, the U.S. government gave the Black Hills of South Dakota to the Sioux Indian Nation in perpetuity. That means forever. I had to look it up. <laughs> you don't see that word a lot. Perpetuity, right? I looked it up. It means forever. So we gave them the land forever. 1868. 1871, gold was discovered in the Black Hills. So if you ever wondered how long forever is, <laughs> about three years. <laughs> We went on their land, stole their gold, and then carved four enormous white president's heads to stare at their ass. That's a dick move. Why not put it in Colorado? There are other mountains about Washington State, you know? We could have done it. I mean, when you look at the U.S. American history now, when the pipeline, right? My God. Walmart has built nine super centers on top of uh, Native American burial grounds. Nine. They're having to roll back on dignity. <laughs> They are slashing morals at one point. And boy, when you look at the history of the Indians and the, the U.S., uh, one thing's for clear, dream catchers don't work. <laughs> if you do that, fuck you. I'll fight you on that. Joke. <laughs> I will fight you on that punchline. It's not my best one, but it ain't my worst. <laughs> 
I think horrific stories should be taught. 1640, Ural da Costa, very religious man, Ural da Costa. He spent his entire life trying to find a church that he agreed with. He was a persnickety bastard, I'll give him that. He didn't quit. He said, I don't want to just go to church and feel good about myself. I want to fill church in my heart, right? And he didn't just go around his city. He went to five different countries in 16 fucking parties. <laughs> Can you imagine getting on a ship, sailing for three months, walking into a church like, nope. <laughs> I mean, that is dedication. I want this man's dedication. Finally, Ural came to his belief that you do not need church to ascend to heaven. And he said so out loud. Oh. Well, he shouldn't have done that. He should have known. Don't you be going around saying shit I fucking like. <laughs> a preacher gave him 39 lashes with a bull whip during a church service and then ordered the congregation to trample his ass. What the fuck? <laughs> I can't even imagine such a church. I've been to a snake handling church in Mississippi and it was not that damn weird. <laughs> Can you imagine being in church on Sunday? Remember our sermon for today? Love thy neighbor. This is the greatest of all our Lord's commandments. Now close your hymnals. We're going to beat the fuck out of you, Ralph. <laughs> then we're going to have some fried chicken. <laughs> it is all through history, is it not? God, you guys think maybe the Big Bang was an accident? <laughs> Most explosions are. <laughs> At one point, we were all beautiful energy, no racism, no sexism, just gorgeous energy, just just swirling around as some fucking meth head lit a cigarette. <laughs> it is all through history. If you write or say something contrary to what the masses believe at the time, you better watch your ass. That's monkey behavior. That's all that shit is. That's it. You different from me? <laughs> It might be more evidence than a tale. 1660, Mary Dyer. Mary Dyer was a Quaker from England. She came to this country for religious freedom. Well, she shouldn't have done that. She should have known you can't be looking for freedom in the land of the fucking free. It was illegal to be a Quaker. I didn't know that. You imagine it was against the law to hold the beliefs of a Quaker in your brain. First thing we did to Mary was arrest her. Then we marched her through town with 200 armed guards and four drummers. Holy shit. Do we know how to throw a killing or what? Four damn drummers. The Grateful Dead only had two drummers. Can you imagine? You're gonna die. We marched her up a scaffold and hanged her till she was dead for being a Quaker. Don't you be coming around here with your peaceful, nonviolent oatmeal ways. <laughs> Buckle up. Well, this is the worst one, ma'am. Buckle up. We're coming into it. That's the problem with this show in front of my group of people. You guys are my group of people. You know, is you guys are offended by the different stuff than the crowds I'm usually in front of. <laughs> During the evolution jokes, every one of you are like, yeah, hell yeah. You know? And then when I talk about what we've done to other people, you're like, that's so mean. <laughs> And I feel guilty. I do. Like, I look at her face. I'm like, why am I doing this to her? She doesn't need to hear this shit. She already knows this. I should be doing this in Martinsville. You know? That's most of my, most of, I built this stuff in Martinsville, you know? But I can't get a good CD in Martinsville. <laughs> Unless you want to listen to me talking guns cock and... <laughs> So I have to write it and do it all over, right? And then come here and, and watch your face go... <laughs> so buckle up. Here we go, man. 1689, Kazimierz. He was a Polish philosopher and a free thinker. Fuck me, he's a dead man. <laughs> 
That's the trifecta right there. You're a philosopher, a free thinker, and fucking Poland! <laughs> That's unassisted suicide. Discovery Channel claims the most dangerous job in the world is crab fishermen. You see that show? It's called Deadliest Catch or whatever. At the beginning, they say, this is the most dangerous job in the world. Bullshit. <laughs> Historically, the most dangerous thing you can do, thinking free. <laughs> That's a dangerous little activity. You know, I've been thinking, not free. Fuck no! <laughs> I've been thinking whatever you want me to. <laughs> Kazumi, she was a philosopher, right? He wrote a big-ass book. That's what philosophers do. Either that or pretend to be comedians. You know, whatever. <laughs> he wrote a big-ass book. In this book was this sentence. God did not create man. Man created God. <laughs> did he not have white out? <laughs> You do not write that sentence on a piece of paper. If you do, you eat the paper and don't shit. <laughs> Close your ears, ma'am. Here's what we did to catch me for writing that sentence in a book. We made him hug a stump in the center of town. Then we strangled him, but we didn't kill him because we had fucking plans. We just strangled the free thought out of his eyes. Then we took pliers, ripped his tongue out of his head, then beheaded him, then burned his body, his head, his tongue, and his book down to ashes. Then you thought we were done? Have you met us? <laughs> we took this dude's ashes, shoved them in a cannon, lit it, and fired his ass out of the city. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> we shot a man's ashes. That is Roadrunner Cody. <laughs> much hatred in their heart. I can't, who looks at a dude's ashes and goes, I ain't done with you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Damn. It seems to me, my friends, all through history, all through history, even the dark ages, all through history, there have been some human beings that want to know the answers. Their curiosity is still ablaze, right? Even if it challenges something they already believe, and there's a shitload of people trying to stop them. You could reduce all human history down to two sentences. I wonder why, and shut the fuck up. <laughs> Does anybody else in this room? See, we went deep, ma'am. Now we're going back up. You ready? Anybody else in this room notices the same thing I am? The punishments for these people are just as creative as the victims. <laughs> if we could get these people to talk. You fix a lot of shit. I know for a fact you and I are extremely curious creatures. Being around my 14 month old son, it's amazing. Every single thing that is in front of his eyes, he wants to know all about everything. Clouds and leaves and rocks and cat poop and electrical outlets. He wants to know what cat poop tastes like so fucking bad. <laughs> I see, he goes over there and gets it. I'm like, that's not for babies. And he's like, bullshit. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, there's a percentage of me that wants to let him find out, you know? There's a part of me that doesn't want to kill that curiosity. There's an even smaller part of me that might want to join him. <laughs> if you can make it to an adult and still have your curiosity, in you. You've done good. You've done real good. You've avoided people telling you what the truth is your entire life. And you've challenged yourself and you've kept an open mind, right? I believe if two human beings could sit across the table from one another and disagree with what that person believes without wanting to rip their liver out and <laughs> I believe we can argue, come to a consensus, and try a different solution to fix problems, you know? I know it's a hippie message. I know my father-in-law's not that far wrong. <laughs> you don't remember that shit? <laughs> I know it's a hippie message, and I also know 1968 ended badly, but fuck, I wanna do it again. <laughs> the United States of America is really bad at solving problems. We're bad problem solvers. We're really good at making shit out of bacon. <laughs> You guys notice that? Our bacon skills are fucking amazing. <laughs> what we've been able to accomplish with bacon is really phenomenal. You know? Maybe we should wrap tolerance in bacon. <laughs>
Right? That would work, right? Have you tried accepting other people? It's got a smoky apple wood flavor. <laughs> We seem to identify one thing we don't like, right? Problem solving. We identify something we don't like, we try a solution to fix it. If that solution doesn't fix it, we just keep fucking doing it. You guys ever notice that? You notice how dumb that is, right? Do the same solution. Failed, failed, failed. Try it again, failed, try it again, failed. Fuck it, try it again, failed. Fuck it, try it again, failed. Over and over and over. Sometimes for 200 years, we've had the same solution. It's never worked and we still do it. That's Einstein's definition of insanity, right? That's Einstein's definition of insanity. We're going to put more fence across Mexico this year, right? That's the plan. Here's my thing. Let's look at it this way. Fences don't stop human beings. I'm from Kentucky. They have never fucking stopped me. Ever. I've gone under them, through them, and over them. When I was 16, my girlfriend called me and said, Oh, I would love it if you come over here and sneak into my window tonight. But we have a fence and a dog. She said some other shit, but I'd already hung up. And notice I'm not even taking a political side on this. No, I'm just saying, first fence went across Mexico in 1850, okay, 1850. In 1850, if you say, we don't want people to come, let's put a fence up, then you spend the next 160 years complaining that too many people have made it. So then you go, let's put a fence up? What the fuck is your problem? That's ridiculous. There's other solutions to fix problems, you know? I don't want you working on my car. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else in this room feels the same way I do about this, but I'm shocked that drugs are still illegal. I'm just shocked. It's a failed solution. You know how many illegal drugs are available for sale in Bloomington tonight? <laughs> Fucking all of them. <laughs> right? Let's look at it common sense. We're not allowed to have them, and we can all get them now. I don't think it's working. <laughs> I can prove to you making drugs illegal is not the solution to the drug problem. You can purchase drugs in prison. <laughs> it's hard to even say that without laughing. <laughs> the place we send you for buying them, they're fucking for sale. <laughs> it's phenomenal. It's incredible. You know, it's a giant failed solution. And I'm not advocating drug use. I think I separate drugs into, you know, marijuana and hallucinogens and then hard drugs. I think hard drugs are hurting us bad, you know, I do. Yeah, and I don't do any drugs at all. That's the truth. You know, illegal. I eat a shitload of Oreos. <laughs> yeah, especially the fudge-covered ones. <laughs> We're not the only creature that does drugs. That's funny as hell to me. It's so funny to me. I've been Googling it lately. Ants get high. Did you know that? Ants get high. There's a beetle, right? Some, I forget the name of the beetle. It's some little beetle, and when it's uh, about to give birth, it secretes a liquid, right? Ants get high. They find this beetle and take care of her. <laughs> they, they do. They take care of her. They bring her all everything she needs until she secretes the liquid, and then they... <laughs> Get high as shit on beetle liquid. What the fuck? It's weird as hell, right? Pigeons get high, crows get high, dolphins get high. The funniest one I've found so far, Siberia. There's a hallucinogenic mushroom that grows in Siberia. It's poisonous to human beings. We cannot do it, but reindeer can, and they fucking love it. Reindeer eat this mushroom and trip. Can you imagine tripping with antlers? I just lean against a dryer, you know. <laughs> Reindeer are now tripping from eating this mushroom, right? Their body filters out the toxins, so now humans can't ingest it. So reindeer herders walk around with an empty cup, and when the and when the reindeer pisses, they get reindeer piss and drink it and fucking trip balls. <laughs> then, some of you guys are not going to believe me. I want you to look it up. I want you to not believe me. I want you to challenge me and Google it and go, fuck, he's right. <laughs> the herders are now tripping from drinking reindeer urine. When the herders urinate, the reindeer eat the yellow snow and fucking trip again. <laughs> That's absolutely true. It's one big, huge human ecosystem psychedelic reindeer piss trip. <laughs> 
<laughs> and all of a sudden, Christmas makes sense. <laughs> if you drink reindeer piss, the elves will make the toys. <laughs> If we're, if we're willing to drink reindeer urine to get high, you think threatening us with jail time is going to stop us? I don't think so. I don't think making anything illegal is an actual solution to a problem. There's no education in it. No one's learning anything. How often throughout history has it worked to tell human beings not to do something? <laughs> Never. If you tell us not to do it, we're like, turn around. <laughs> That's the way we are, right? I'll never forget this day. I'll tell you this story. I was in uh, my granddaddy's farm in Kentucky, all right? And there was a weird hole in the ground. I was eight years old, and I'm walking around, and I started to look in that hole, and my granddaddy pulled me back and goes, you're not allowed to go in that hole. As soon as he turned around, I fucking went in the hole. Buddy. I went head first into that damn thing. <laughs> and that is the day I learned what an outhouse is. <laughs> All my granddaddy had to say was, that hole's full of shit. You can go in if you want to. I would've been like, ugh, I'll find another weird hole. <laughs> Human beings, hindsight's only 20-20 if you've learned something since you fucked up, you know? I've always hated that phrase, hindsight's 20-20. Not if you're still an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> if you screw up and then do the same thing again, it, your eyesight's not getting back. <laughs> what does it matter how good it is if your head's up your ass? <laughs> it's all dark in there. <laughs> Human beings, man. When you, when you look at our repetitive behavior, you know, we'll fight maggots for a rotten idea. <laughs> Think, how many people do you think laughed at that line? Eight or nine? That might be the record. I love that line so much. Human beings are fighting maggots for a rotten idea. I still remember the Red Roof Inn I was in when I wrote it. I've been doing comedy 20 years. I rarely laugh out loud when I write something. I usually write it and go, ah, that's not proving my point, or oh, that right there is good, you know, or whatever. But when I wrote Human Beings Are Fighting Maggots, I went, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> It's gorgeous, fucked up Edgar Allan Poe dark poetry to me. And it illustrates our point. There's an idea that's so rotten, maggots are starting to eat it. And humans are like, get away, that's ours, we're gonna do it again. <laughs> I do. I remember the Red Roof Inn I was in because I moved the bed. I did. That's the way I write. I have to walk. A lot of my friends literally will sit at a computer for hours and just, I can't, I don't understand how people can do that. I have to move. I have to get my brain working and I talk out loud, you know? So in hotel rooms, I, I will move beds if it's a small hotel room and fold up the, 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 the you know, the thing, whatever you call the thing underneath it, you know, the frame. Right? The bed frame. I've done that too and just created a space for me to walk, you know? I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. <laughs> and I walk, and I don't even try to be funny. I literally, I'm walking around in circles like, I, I don't know why she wants a rabbit. It's a weird pet. It's always been weird. I don't know. I never really, ever wanted, I'm going to get a rabbit. But I love her, so I guess we'll get a rabbit. I hope we name it Ted Bunny. <laughs> Shit in the rabbit name Ted Bunny, yeah. <laughs> Alright, that's the compromise right there. Go we'll we'll get a rabbit, I name it. That's the compromise. Yeah. God, I like that. She's gonna hate it, but she loves me. So she loves me. That's what a good marriage is, you know? Allowing someone to do some shit that you fucking hate. <laughs> Uh, all right, back to comedy. Let's see. I wonder if the crowd is realizing that these deaths are going in chronological order. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> you make twelve thousand a year. What does it matter what they realize? <laughs> At this point, you do it for yourself. So you write it the way it should be. You probably figure out a creative way of letting them know. <laughs> I'll tell you, 
human beings, man. We'll fight maggots for a rotten Now, fuck, that's gold right there. <laughs> and then I literally write that down on a red roof in pad, you know, and I underline it, exclamation point. Because in my mind, I picture myself standing up here and saying it, and every one of you going, fuck yeah! <laughs> and then I do it, and nine of you went, huh? <laughs> such a frustrating thing to do with your life. Why did I just call you nine, you know? You know what I mean, right, man? I could have just called every one of you and went, listen to this, you know the things, and you went, that's pretty funny right here. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the show, I'm tired of repeating the same thing, the same result, we do it again. 1865, Ignis Semmelweis, medical doctor from Vienna, first human being to figure out that if doctors would start washing their hands in between delivering babies, it was not common practice to, to wash your hands in between delivering babies, and the death rate for mothers was extremely high. He figured out that if we would sterilize our hands, but well, he shouldn't have done that shit. <laughs> he should have known. Don't you be going around figuring shit out. <laughs> First thing we did to Ignis was fire him. We removed his medical license. He's no longer allowed to practice medicine. Then we committed him to an insane asylum. Is anybody in the room still listening to me? That's a little bit of a fucking late. <laughs> I don't understand how you go from point A to what the fuck? I don't understand. <laughs> hey guys, look at my test here. We should wash our hands. Fuck you, fire crazy. <laughs> and I guess this was a radical idea for 1865. I guess, you know, washing your hands was taboo. Right? The first day that Ignis was in the asylum, the guards beat the shit out of him. They beat him bad. He died 14 days later because the wounds from the beating got infected because the guards had not... <laughs> Human beings are more scared of being wrong than we are interested in being right. We're scared that we're wrong, holding on so tight, you know. 1952, Alan Turing. If you're in this room and you do not know who Alan Turing is, look it up. He will fascinate you. He's one of the human beings that led us to this, right? A lot of people, my generation and older, complain about this a lot. I agree with some of their complaints, but this is a mind opener. You can learn anything you want to know. We do not have to go far back in history to even if you cared about your intelligence, you had no access to books. Any weird fucking thing you want. I'm not the only human being that sits on the toilet and Googles weird shit. Right? Anything pops in your little head, you're like, did John Adams wear a girdle? Be honest. Right? Anything at all. Was Aquaman based on a true story? Yeah. Expand your mind with this. Has anybody ever slit anybody's throat with a vanity license plate? <laughs> Twice. <laughs> Alan Turing's math led us to this, but he was a homosexual. Well, he shouldn't have done that. <laughs> he should have known. Don't you be going around being who you are. <laughs> He broke the Enigma code. Nazi Germany had a machine called Enigma. They were sending coded messages to submarines and Nazi ships and everything. Everybody was trying to break the code. Canada, we had a team trying to break it. Alan Turing and his mathematicians broke the code. Historians say Alan Turing shortened World War II by two full years. He literally saved millions of men's lives. But he thought some of them were pretty fucking sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Too much for the closed mind. 2013. Did you feel that? I love that moment. Yeah. Everybody just immediately was like, oh, fuck. It's heavy. It's a heavy moment. 2013, right? I've already told you they're going in chronological order, right? It's a heavy moment. We're, we're emotionally connected to 2013. It makes us feel weird. Like 925, Razzies, the guy that got beat with his own book, we're not emotionally connected to those people, right? Those people were dumber than shit. I mean, they're dumber than hell. They didn't even have leaf blowers. 2013 makes us feel all weird inside, right? We'll run through it quick because it's important and unfunny. Here we go. Dr. Narenda Dakar. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm from Kentucky, so every foreign name I try to pronounce sounds like Ricky Jr. <laughs> I'm 
so bad at foreign names. Essentially, French names, fuck. I'm just like Pierre, or I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Narenda Dakar, okay? Uh, India still has a problem with superstition in the rural sections of India, but let's be honest, in the rural sections of Indiana, same fucking deal. <laughs> Yeah, one of the problems they, that Narenda, bug, it bugged Narenda, bothered him. Poor people, I'm putting that in quotes, poor people would have a legitimate medical issue. And instead of going to a legitimate medical doctor, they would go to a spiritual healer. And the healer would tell them, as well, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but you're possessed by Satan. We just got the test by it. And if you give me $50, I'll remove Satan from your body. And then these poor people would give them their money. And they couldn't afford that. It's expensive to remove Satan. <laughs> so Narendra went around India giving speeches, telling people that would listen, if anybody claims anything about you, you ask for evidence before you give someone money. Don't give anybody money until they prove it to you. What? We shouldn't have done that. I think it's pretty clear about 2013. You fuck with people's belief systems, you better watch your ass. Don't you tell me I ain't possessed by Satan. I feel them all in my body. He was shot and killed while he was out walking his dog. So that's BC to 2013. It's the same behavior repeated over and over and over. And just in case there's one person in this room or listening to this CD who's thinking, well, that's India. That's not the United States of America. Come on. Turn the news on. Open a paper. Try being a Muslim in this society right now. Hard to be. Hard to be. It's hard to be anything different. Try being an atheist. Fuck. Put atheist down on <clears throat> the application. See if Arby's calls you back. <laughs> Anything different at all. It's very hard to be. Try being a red-headed vegan Satanist. <laughs> I feel bad for vegan Satanists. I mean, that's got to be a tight line to walk, you know? <laughs> I want to drink the goat's blood, but I can't. <laughs> Hard to be anything at all. Last year, 32 transgender people were murdered in this country, right? And that's just the ones that reported on the news. Eight atheists were shot for their lack of belief in this country. Just the ones that reported in the news. We're no different than anybody else, you know? Anybody different is hard to be. You know, it seems to me we all start out amazingly curious, right? And if you can somehow hold on to that, you can get your way through our education system, right? And then you can get all the way into adulthood and all these people telling you the truth, right? And this is the way it is. This is the way the world works, right? The truth is human beings have not been here that long. If scientists are correct, and they might not be, they might be dead wrong, right? But if they are correct, the Big Bang happened 14 billion years ago. That is an enormous fucking number. I have a public Kentucky education. We're 53rd in the country. Break 14 billion down, right? Let's make it palatable to this sponge. 14 billion is roughly a shitload of millions. Are we all in agreement? That is a shitload, give or take a load of shit. The statisticians know we have to allow for error. If scientists are correct, modern humans, you and I, we appeared on this earth about 200,000 years ago. So written history as we know it, 5,000 years old. We've only been jotting shit down for 5,000 years. And we've only been using facts to describe our surroundings since August. <laughs> And all of a sudden, we're all walking around like, I know the answers. I fucking doubt it. We just got here. We just fucking got here. Every time we go into space, look at how much we learn. Every time we go into the ocean, we discover new species of sharks in the ocean. Every time we go into the Amazon jungle, every time we go into a Waffle House bathroom, look at how much we fucking learn. Every time I go in there, I'm like, Doug's a dick. I didn't know that. <laughs> We learn so much every time we go outside, right? We're still in the phase of collecting information. Human beings built a belief system and started killing each other before we knew all the facts. 
whoops. If you answer a question, any question, and you do not know all the facts that are involved in that question, that's called a guess. And if you arbitrarily just decide one day that your guess is the truth, that is called delusional. <laughs> as soon as you just believe that every single thing in your brain is the truth, that is when you yell at a comedian, Jesus Christ does not believe in transgender people. <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio, I was on stage, he said that, and I responded, I said, sir, with all due respect, it's not possible for you to know the thoughts of Jesus Christ. It's not possible. I said that to him, knowing 100% in my brain and my heart, he's probably going to shoot me. <laughs> and then at my funeral, one of my comedy buddies will be like, Whoa, shut up. came in here tonight and thought, oh, I've been at work all day. I'm so exhausted. I hope he just talks about his whiner. <laughs> <laughs> if that was your mindset when you walked through the door, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what I like, you know. You don't write what you know, you write what you like. <laughs> It's a very dark comedy show. Very dark comedy show, right? That's what I said at the beginning, you know? Where's the hope, right? Where's the hope? I have a very good friend named Emily. Emily and I are probably closer than any other person. I've known her much longer than I've known my wife, you know? Emily and I talk all the time, at least three times a week. Sometimes, I mean, seriously, 20 times a week we're on the phone. And we hate anger. You know, we hang up on each other. We discuss. We cheat. Emily says stuff to me I never would have even thought of. She challenges the way I think, right? And it makes me furious and curious, right? We hang up on each other, we get mad, and then we call each other back, you know, best of friends, you know? Emily has a master's degree in philosophy, all right? And I've been to Arkansas. <laughs> so we're bringing different shit to the table. <laughs> She's read about it, I have fucking seen it. <laughs> Emily has no hope for humanity, none at all. We argue about this all the time because I do. I've seen it with my own eyes. That's the reason I do. My favorite story about hope for humanity, Nebraska. I was doing bar shows in Nebraska one night after another, driving to the next town, right? Uh, Thursday afternoon, plenty of time to get to the town I need to be in, so I'm enjoying my day on the interstate. I've got my windows down, nice day outside, got a books on tape I like listening to, just cruising along the Nebraska highways, right? Came up upon this car that was weaving, all right? And I don't mean like, whoops, I dropped my Cheetos kind of shit. <laughs> We've all done that where something slips and it's just, this was weird as hell. I mean, it's just, this guy, he's doing about 70, maybe even 75, but he was just weaving all over the interstate. He'd go over the rumble strip, and go this way and over the rumble strip and go back. It was like he was bowling with the bumpers in, you know? <laughs> Weird as shit. And I immediately let off the gas and backed up. I was like, what the hell's going on with this dude? Drunk? Piece of shit? Come out here, you, you know, you think this whole world's about you? There's other people, man. We have to live together, you piece of shit, drunk asshole. Right? I'm thinking all this stuff in my head. All of a sudden, his car left. The interstate. <laughs> Not on an exit. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. I mean, he went full speed, 70 miles per hour, through a field in Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, fuck! Because that is what you say when <laughs> that happens. And I didn't think about this. I didn't have time to think about it. I pulled my car over, threw it in park, opened the door, just started running. <laughs> I'm running, and I could hear people behind me running. They passed me. <laughs> I'm not in good shape. <laughs> and there were people coming from their car. I mean, a bunch of us just running. We're chasing a vehicle through a field. <laughs> Fuck. And he hit an embankment and stopped. We caught up, opened the door. Two grown men in the car. A lot of blood. 
driver's head was on the steering wheel. I started to get him out, right? And a guy pulled me back and goes, don't even touch him. He might have a neck injury. We're not supposed to touch people. I was like, Sh I've heard that. You're right. You're absolutely right. I'm sorry. Get someone over here. My cell phone's in my car. Call someone. That's a lot of blood, right? And a guy from the other side of the car goes, I smell gas. You guys smoke it. That's it. It's leaking gas. We got to get these men out of this car. Gas is coming out. So we're like, okay, yeah, yeah but careful, you know? We pick these men up, carry them far away, lay them down the field, ambulances pull up, put both men on stretchers, loaded them in, gone. Then there's 12 human beings, total strangers, in a field in Nebraska lake. How you doing? <laughs> Awkward as shit, you know? Felt so weird. And then one guy goes, man, I hope they're all right. <clears throat> don't know what it was about that sentence. That's a simple sentence. I hope they're all right. Immediately, we all started talking. Like we'd known each other since kindergarten. All of us are walking back to our cars going, I hope they're all right, too. <laughs> Did you see that guy? Yeah, I saw him. He was breathing. I'm not kidding, man. I know I was standing right there. They lifted that stretcher up. I saw his chest go up and down several times. If he's breathing, he's got a chance, you know? No, I didn't see the other guy at all. He was on the other side. I hope he's still, if he's breathing, he's got a chance, you know? I do. I hope they both make it. Yeah, absolutely. Nice to meet you. Definitely, man. Yeah, I hope they do. Hey, take care. Drive safe, you know? Yeah, don't be fucking around out there, you know? Because I don't want to run again. <laughs> and I walk over to my car, and I sat down in my car, and I began to, to start it up. But all of a sudden, I stopped. Because it occurred to me, when that vehicle left the interstate, none of us knew anything about them. At all. We didn't know one fact. We didn't know if they were male or female, black or white, atheist, Christian. They could have been Mormons for fuck's sake. <laughs> we didn't know shit about those people at all. We saw a car leave the interstate. Twelve human beings immediately just started running. And nobody was going, I hope they're not dead. <laughs> nobody said, you know what, man? These people up here are Republicans. I'm gonna turn around. <laughs> Nobody got to the car, opened the door, and said, Sir, sir, I know that you're covered in blood, but we need to know where you stand on immigration reform. <laughs> I'm sitting in my car, and it occurs to me, when that vehicle left that interstate, my belief system vanished. My judgments vanished. I just ran to hell. That's the best part of a human being. Right? Whatever that shit is. Us caring. That's the best part of a human being. I called Emily immediately. I got her on the phone. I was like, you don't believe in hope for humanity? Fucking listen to this shit. <laughs> I told her the whole story. I was like, I was like, you drunk piece of shit. How do I know if he was drunk? He might have had a heart attack. What the fuck do I know? And the next thing you know, I'm running and you know how much I fucking hate that shit. <laughs> I told her the entire story. At the end of it, she goes, damn. Those two men had guardian angels watching over them. And I deleted her from Facebook. <laughs> guardian ass angels. You know what the truth is, my friends? I don't know if guardian angels exist. How could I know that? And to be honest, I don't even care. I do not care. You and I taking care of each other, even if you disagree with the other person, is hope. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it.